This is a recording of papers given at the conference on the 7th of November, 1981, organized by the Scottish Georgian Society and the Department of Extramural Studies of the University of Edinburgh, with the support of the Scottish Church's Architectural Heritage Trust. Mr. Ian Begg, architect, member of the Historic Buildings Council for Scotland. The friend that I followed James Simpson would be able to say, first of all, thank you, I, I agree with so much of what he said, but also he said so much, there doesn't seem to be much left to say. Um, so I'm second in this trio of architects grappling with the problem, what's been described as a crisis. Financial help, you might ask, shows your muscles. Well, I'm not here with a pocket full of carrots or uh, more than I have any sort of liking to a sugar daddy. I don't have powerful muscles, but I think perhaps from the sort of official side, there is a modest injection to give that might increase the tone of your muscles. Your muscles are the important ones. Architects are great at spending money, other people's money, of course trained and in fact trusted to a phenomenal degree. It is perhaps sad that we are also under enormous pressure and criticism for things done to our environment. To some degree, true. But we are trained to do what you want. And our special skill is to understand what you really want, assess whether you can get it, and make sure that you can pay for it. <laughs> The three architects on stage this afternoon have a fair battery of hats, as you will quickly realize. They wear these from time to time, and I genuinely believe that we have different hats because we care. We wear the hat appropriate to the occasion. Today, I'm wearing the hat of someone interested in giving financial help to architects and the fabric conveners of church bodies, interested in maintaining and repairing <coughs> churches in Scotland. I hold the strings of a modest purse. Let me come back to the muscles. Where is this muscle that is going to deliver the energy needed to meet the problem, the crisis? Let me say without any shadow of doubt that the muscle is in fact in the local church or congregations who are facing the responsibilities and looking after church buildings over the length and breadth of this country. I have talked to several people this week in the connection, and the point became very clear in one com conversation. Even within the Church of Scotland alone, there must be something around two or three million pounds spent annually by congregations in looking after their church buildings. That's not surprising today when you consider that there are over 2,000 churches in the Church of Scotland. So that is where the muscle is, and it is strong. Financial help is what these congregations get to top up the money they make, to make it possible to do a good job when they are about it. The first place that the congregation looks to for help beyond the local scene is to the central funds of their church, whether they are Church of Scotland, Free Church, Roman Catholic, or whatever. Now, generally these church bodies don't have vast sums of money. The Free Church of Scotland allocates about £12,000 a year for this purpose. In practice, it turns out to be more. And the Church of Scotland has a fabric fund of approximately 900000 which is being turned over as loans to churches. The interest at about 8% is in turn used to make grants. Certainly very conscious of history and sympathetic to local feeling for architectural or historic quality generally sees its duty to do basic maintenance and not to maintain the frills. So the central body might be seen to be lending money at reasonable interest rates to enable a proper contract to be accepted in advance of the total sum required being collected. They also give grants to ease the load on the most hard-pressed communities. 
talking in very, very broad terms. In good, well-run local church organizations, the bulk of the funds are made up locally. There are many trusts who will also help in a modest way to meet the costs involved in sound maintenance work. Uh, there, there is no doubt the different denominations have trusts that are allied to themselves, but the bodies like the Historic Buildings Council for Scotland and the Scottish Church's Architectural Heritage Trust try to maintain some knowledge of trusts that might help church building. I should say in this connection that one of the large trusts, we call the Pilgrims in London, used to help Scottish churches directly in a modest way. They now channel all their help to Scottish churches through the Scottish Church's Architectural Heritage Trust. Some churches have special problems, and these problems sometimes greatly increase the financial burden. Think of these extraordinarily beautiful churches maybe nowadays much too big for the congregations, but which, but which add enormous quality to our towns and villages. The sort of place that you instantly recognize as being a landmark, a church tower that lets you know where you are. You might pass it every day and it becomes almost as important as your own front door. It is part of the scene. It's the Tower of St. Stephen's, at the foot of House Street in Edinburgh. The nice curling spire on St. Margaret's in Huntley. The great, strong, round church standing at the head of the main street of the harbour in Beaumont on Isla. Or the extraordinarily rich and beautiful example of high Georgian architecture, which is the Church of St Andrews in the old part of Glasgow. We saw beautiful pictures of that building today. These really are special churches, built by our forebears and there are hundreds of them that make an outstanding contribution to the architectural heritage of Scotland. The cost of replacing highly decorative plasterwork made dangerous through rotting of timber supports, or the job of reharling and reslating the bulky form of Bowmore to keep the interior warm and protected, cost money beyond the resources of the local congregation aided by central funds. To some degree, this is where the Historic Buildings Council for Scotland is now able to give some support. And the Scottish Church's Architectural Heritage Trust have an even more modest contribution to make. Local authorities, through the Planning and Civic, Civic Amenity Acts, can contribute to repair of historic churches, and some are quite generous, or have been. Now, you might not entirely approve of the system or the number or value of grants offered, but the intention is most certainly to aid local congregations to maintain and repair these beautiful churches that were built in the past and have been handed on down to them. It may be that congregations today cannot and perhaps shouldn't be expected to spend scarce money on art and architecture. That is a different problem, but things slowly change. It is only three years since the Historic Buildings Council for Scotland started giving grants to churches. Only three years. And while ap applications for grants were slow to come in at the outset, the scheme is now very heavily under pressure and the funds available are not at all adequate to cope with the problem thrown up by the number of applications. <laughs> it is obvious that only the very best will get through the net and will receive substantial support. And of the very best, only those which have been well looked after in the past and show that they are likely to maintain a high standard of care and repair in the future are likely to be supported. This is not a myriad official policy, it's sort of reading between the lines and knowing the incredible shortage of money at this present moment. The Historic Buildings Council grant scheme is operated in cooperation with various denominations in Scotland and generally the route to the Historic Buildings Council is through the denominational headquarters of each church. Grants to historic churches in ecclesiastical use have totaled just over one million pounds in three years since they were introduced. Now that, compare that with the two or three million perhaps spent by the Church of Scotland alone each year, 
and you get a measure of the actual official support that is being given. And so, only the very best churches are likely to be supported by the Historic Buildings Council in the foreseeable future. That will be measured in dozens rather than the hundreds that will be requesting, almost demanding money. But I've mentioned the Scottish Church's Architectural Heritage Trust mercifully produced the SCAT, which was set up again just over three years ago with the object of helping those churches important in our architectural heritage, which, although not reaching the high quality of the standards laid down and likely to be accepted by HBC, are nevertheless of great value. This sort of help will be particularly important in the local scene. These grants are modest when compared with Historic Buildings Council grants, but they are very much appreciated and we not only hope, we believe that these modest sums can inspire congregations to press for that extra quality in repair that will maintain the quality of their church buildings. There is not much money available and there is a rapidly growing demand for what there is. You know, for a long time, I worried about the SCAT giving only sums ranging between 500 and 2,000 pounds to a congregation. It doesn't go a long way if the repair job is going to cost 30 or 50,000. But there are two sides to this. Firstly, all the money given out by SCAT, as it was called, has to be contributed from private or public sources, and the present sum available is far below the target price of 1 million pounds which was the object of our initial appeal. But secondly, vast, tempting, sorry, vast, terrifying sums of money, such as I've mentioned, should be a rare occurrence. As has been pointed out by James, with proper inspection repair, costs can be kept within bounds, and nowadays there is little excuse for inadequate inspection and early warning of trouble. The pailful of dirt in the gutter may, if left, result in dry rot eradication costing many thousands of pounds. It really can be as simple as that. And you'll hear more of this. I have found that in England, coming back to the level of grants being given, the equivalent of SCAT has been run for very many years on <laughs> grant giving very similar to those offered by SCAT, and I find that the level of grant offered by the Church of Scotland and other church bodies is again in this range of a few hundred to maybe two thousand pounds. That in fact seems to me, having been worried for some time about the level, that is what we should be doing when the, when the problem has been ascertained within the church itself, the inspection carried out. I entirely agree with James in this uh, subject of uh, reports. I don't think it's the responsibility of SCAT or HBC to pay for that initial report, which, as he says, is maybe only £200 when compared with the vast sums of money actually being spent on church building. Loans may be for higher sums, but the important thing is that these sums of money prime the pump and give that injection of energy to the muscle, which is, and I hope always will remain, the driving force of local congregations.